Matapos ang antike, aklan at palawan ngayon naman sa Batangas. Pag-usapan natin ang pagkalat ng oil spill mula Oriental Mindoro at ang panganib na dala nito sa Marine Biodiversity sa Verde Island Passage kasama ang director ng De La Salle University Shields Ocean Research Center na si Al Liquanan. Magandang gabi sa iyo, Al. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Magandang gabi, Pia. So, Al, can you um, explain to us no, what this means? So, earlier in the day, sinabi na nga ng Coast Guard na kumalat daw nandun na raw sa may Verde Island Passage. Uh, but this late this afternoon, ang sinasabi nila, medyo may konting kambyo eh. Ang sinasabi nila eh, uh, sa shoreline, may nakitang oil spill, yung langis, pero dun sa offshore, wala na raw makita as, as uh, proven daw by the aerial uh, inspection. Uh, how are we supposed to understand this? Well, uh, yung isang kailangan nating tandaan is medyo pabago-bago na yung hangin, lalo na ngayon na nagtatapos na yung amihan. So medyo mahirap i-predict kung saan yung direction ng hangin at uh, yung sumusunod na currents ng tubig. Isa rin kailangan consider is mabilis talaga ang currents dito sa part na to ng Verde Island. So, uh, yung isang lumulutang na stick ay malayo ang maaabot. Mm -hmm. So it's possible, nakita nga doon sa may shoreline uh, and then big, doon sa tubig, nadala na ng uh, current or kuryente elsewhere. Ganun ba? Yes, oo. So, okay. so mabilis yan uh, mag-travel, mag-dissipate. Uh, pero pwede rin mangyari na naiipon sa ibang parts kung meron kang parang equivalent ng whirlpool or uh, isang eddy na tinatawag. So pwede rin makoncentrate yung lumulutang na oil in certain portions. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, several uh, groups uh, trying to contain the oil spill doon sa may uh, Nauhan or sa Oriental Mindoro. But apparently, of course, as, as already seen, uh, kumalat siya, no? Um, this is because of uh, the current, like you said. No? And, and in other words, talagang kailangan i-expect natin ito. Na talagang kakalat yan no matter how many oil spill booms you lay, for example. Yes, and also dahil meron pang lumalabas na oil from the sunken tanker. So, so depending kung saan papunta yung currents no time na na-release siya, at uh, considering na malayo nga yung maabot, uh, madaming areas na kailangan... Uh, kailangan matyagan yung, yung sitwasyon. Okay. Pag-usapan natin, Aldi, yung uh, Verde Island Passage mismo, no? How crucial, how critical is this? And how important is it na uh, hindi siya maapektuhan masyado, kahit masyado lang, ng oil spill na ito, ng oil slip? Well, Verde Island Passage, uh, as many uh, sectors know, is very important dahil yung marine biodiversity niya, yung dami ng species na natatagpuan sa isang area, ay napaka-unique. Uh, hindi lang sa Pilipinas, but globally. So that's one reason the area is very important sa dami ng species. Uh, the other reason the area is very important is it has been identified as a refuge of sorts mm -hmm. from climate change. Ang ibig sabihin niyan, dahil on, in general, uh, hindi lang yung uh, atmosphere ang umiinit, but also yung karagatan. Yung Verde Island, dahil sa patterns ng pagdaloy ng tubig dyan, uh, kadalasan, mas malamig yung tubig sa bahaging yan kaysa sa ibang parts ng Pilipinas. Which means na isang refuge area siya from ocean warming, yung mga corals na nagbe-bleach dahil mainit yung tubig. In general, sa Verde Island, uh, mas mabilis sila mag-recover if they bleach at all. Mm -hmm. And so, and so... Verde Island is one of those areas na refuge from mm -hmm. climate change mm -hmm. for marine organisms. Huling tanong na lang, uh, Al, itong uh, 800,000 metric tons uh, of oil that uh, uh, spilled from that tanker, that sunken tanker, uh, can you give us the worst case scenario for uh, areas affected by that oil spill? 
one of the things that uh, I don't think is being discussed a lot uh, is yung chemicals na hindi natin necessarily nakikita mm-hmm. na ngayon ay kumakalat. Okay. okay. Yung mga organisms, lalo na yung mga maliliit na similia, mga larval stages, mas sensitive sila dun sa pollutants kaysa yung adults. And so, yung worst case scenario dyan is we're already uh, losing uh, a lot of the biodiversity and we're not even in a position to detect yung, yung loss na yun. Okay, so, so just because uh, walang oil slick sa isang lugar does not mean na yung pollutants na associated dun sa oil ay uh, wala din dun sa area na yun. Most likely, nandodoo na sila most likely mas malawak pa na area yung naabot nila and mm-hmm. and they're already poisoning uh, larval stages and uh, it may be decades before we actually mm-hmm. see their effects so imagine may isang generation ng corals na are already dying and hindi natin malalaman yon until it's time na yung generation na yon kung nabuhay sila ay uh, magiging mas malaki na Mm-hmm. Like what chemicals, Al? Pahabon na lang na tanong. What chemicals, what pollutants are you referring to? Well, general, generally, when you talk about oil, that's that's not just a single chemical. Mm-hmm. It's it's a mixture of uh, many chemicals. Some are uh, more soluble in water than others. Uh, mm-hmm. Some tend to be solid. Are others uh, evaporate very quickly? Uh, kaya nga, di ba, madaming tao kahit na hindi sila pumasok sa tubig right. ay nagkakaroon ng uh, effects sa kanilang mm. health. Mm. Uh, oil is is a mix of many, many chemicals and a lot of them are very toxic. Alright. Maraming salamat sa iyo, Al Licuana, the director ng De La Salle University Shields Ocean Research Center. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. So,